Why must I, as a soul in a material plane, bear a cross? Why must I, as a soul in a material plane, bear a cross? This is a question that each of us individually should ask ourselves, and the manner in which we answer determines our spiritual status. It is the spiritual gauge of our development since the fall of humanity. Why must I, as a soul in a material plane, bear a cross? Whenever this question has been considered, many go away and walk no more in the way. Will ye go also? Shall we not reply, Lord, to whom shall we go? For thou alone hast the words of eternal life. Shall we evade the cross that is ours to bear, especially at this time when humanity is entering the greatest test period in the history of the world? The words of the prophet seem to come ringing down the ages, who may abide the day of his coming? Know we not that it is only those whose loins are girt about with truth? Who shall be able to abide to take this stand? As individuals in the material plane, we must of necessity bear many things coincident with his earthly experience, and by recognizing our obligations as children of the living God, as he did, and learning from him the lesson of meekness and lowliness of heart, we exemplify through service and sacrifice the life he lived. Knowing that the purpose of life is to be one with the Father, we have to wait if we expect to see results in material manifestation. There is no surer way of realization than to keep on keeping on in the way of the Christ. While our efforts may seem wrong in the eyes of everyone, there is a power that takes hold in our extremities and adjusts every situation. As we trust that power, our strength is renewed. As we meet the crosses, endure the temptations, and overcome them, we become heirs and joint heirs with him to the crown of glory. All who fulfill the purpose for which they are called bear their crosses not in sorrow, not in wailing, but in the joy of the Lord. As a sign to us who have met our crosses and have overcome them, there comes that ability to meet other and greater crosses in the joy of the Lord and to rejoice that we are counted worthy. Let us enter into the service that may be our part as channels of blessings to others. In so doing we become conscious that our lives are spent in the way he would have us go and that his presence abides with us. The door is open. Virtue and understanding find activity. Faith is renewed day by day, for we are more able to understand conditions that arise, whether from the mental, the material, or the spiritual. Access to the Father may be held as a cooperative force in whatever sphere of activity we may engage when in service to others. It is not in times or seasons or in any place. But in every place, every day, and every hour that we may show forth his love to those we contact. By our lives others may know that he walks with us and is our friend. Upon what is the glory of the crown conditioned? Faithfulness. The cross is the emblem, with the dove and the olive branch, brings peace to those that seek rather to give to their fellows that which is helpful and hopeful in their experiences. Because many interpret that they have received contrary to thine own manner of thought, find ye not fault with them. For he has given, they that gather not with us scatter abroad, that which may open the door, the way, for those that seek to know the Maker, the Giver of life, eternal. Glory ye in the promises of thy Lord, thy Master, thy Brother, in those things that he would do in the earth through thine feeble efforts. For he will give thee strength and will bear thee up to meet the burdens of the day, the hour. Faint not. Be not over-anxious, for his ways are thy ways if ye seek to let him have his way with thee. 
The cross grows brighter, and yet a cross for everyone. Without the cross there is no crown. Without the bitter there is no sweet. Without love, ye are lost indeed. To be a channel of blessing to others is that purpose for which each soul has come into conscious activity in a material world. Thus as you exercise these in relationship to the problems, you become strengthened to meet. Physically, mentally, spiritually. Those purposes he has given as to thy way of life in this material experience. Self in the physical grows weary, because you are only human, because you are finite. You have a beginning, you have an end of your patience, your love, your hope, your fear, your desire. These are to be considered also. Not as unto self, but when these problems arise no, as he has given, you cannot walk the whole way alone, but he has promised in the Christ consciousness to give you strength, to give you life and that more abundant. What, then, is life? God, in power, in might, in the awareness of the strength needed to meet every problem day by day. No, it is in the little things, not by thunderous applause, not by the ringing of bells, nor the blowing of whistles, that the Son of Man comes. Humble, gently, kind, meek, lowly. For he that is the greatest among you serveth all. Is there anything the forces would recommend for me to do? Present thine self to those forces that make for a more perfect relationship with the living God, not that of any individual's dead past. That would seek to climb up by thine own hard way. For, as was given, he that climbs up any other way than by the way of the cross is a thief and a robber. So, make thine approach to that force as manifests itself in the material world as the sun to that throne, and be satisfied with none beneath that approach. So may the consciousness of the Christ life come into thine possession. Come, my children, and know in whom thou hast believed. For he is able to keep thy needs, thine wants, thy desires, in the palm of his hand. Walk in his ways, that thine going in and coming out through this plain may come nearer and nearer the way of the cross. For though the cross may be heavy, in him is that that makes it light. Just those little words here and there. Grow in grace, in knowledge, in understanding, that thy ways may be one with the creative ways, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In this entity's experiences we find, from the astrological, much that would be termed astrological does not apply. For, the application of self may make for those activities whereunto ye may use those tendencies, or ye may abuse them. Just as an individual entity may deny the cross, despise the crown, and thus find in self that confusion which is not in keeping with his purposes in the earth. Then, being in keeping with his purposes is being at one with creative forces. Thus fulfilling the law and becoming one with that creative force. From Mercury, Uranus, Venus and Jupiter, we find the beauty, the ability to control, direct, to lead others by the entity's own persuasive way or manner. Hence as a teacher, as an instructor, should the entity be led by the way of life and light and truth and thus teach others. For, if the blind led the blind, they that accept a prophet in the name of the prophet, receive the prophet's reward, though even the prophet may be at variance to those tenets, which might bring others to an understanding or an interpreting. But they are both of the way. For, he that climbeth up some other fooleth himself, and is not wise. How may I overcome the innate doubt or fear which prevents attunement with the Christ, as promised? Just keeping on keeping on in the trust. Trust. In him. No direct way may be experienced for self by another. And yet the entity finds self very oft close to being directed in that way. Hold fast to him. Let that which causes doubt or fear be taken up in the willingness, the desire, to be of help to others. 
then, if it were not so, I would have told you. These mean much. He has given you the pattern. His pattern, and he has promised, I stand at the door of thy heart. Open, I will come in and abide. And that loneliness, that disappointment which has so oft been thine will disappear, and you will come again to those visions of hope, of having a hope. It must first be created in thine own mind, and then there will come into thy experience again the hope such that with that companionship there may be brought material, mental and spiritual fulfillment. If the spiritual purposes and ideals are kept in accord with Lord, use me. My body, my mind, my whole being, as a channel of blessing to someone today. Not the whole world. As ye look into the face of some child, see the smile of hope that ye have lost at times. Then bring to someone a smile again, where you have seen the tear start. The smile is as that look which the master gave Peter, and he went out and wept. For he found himself. So may ye, as ye bring. By thy look, into the faces of others. That conviction of the love of the Christ is shown in Jesus the man. July 28, 1926, in the afternoon, while praying, and in that part of prayer asking forgiveness of 4255. A definite impression of an arm coming about my shoulder and pressing the shoulder. When the impression became so distinct as to even move the shirt sleeve, I foolishly jumped up in fright, yet even as I did I thanked him for coming to me in that hour of need. This, as we see, that full consciousness of the body conscious and mental conscious in that position of attunement to the oneness of those universal forces, as are manifested in the supplication of prayer, or attunement with that divine force of that as has been given, my spirit beareth witness with thy spirit, whether ye be the sons of God or not. And, as this impression of this full at oneness comes, as has often been said, be not afraid, for, as has been given, fear within self has lost to the entity many of those beloved experiences of the body conscious and mental conscious entity of this body. In the conditions, though, as experienced here, there is seen by the entity that in many of the various phases of the life there is seen that of the full concept of this experience in the life, both in the relations for whom the entity prayed, and for those relations with that entity and others surrounding. Just as there is seen in the full concept of the entities at oneness, bringing into the life more and more those beauties of those who love the Lord and His appearing. For unto him who is faithful is the crown of life given, unto him, who would make self at one with his desires, his ambitions, being in that direction of giving to others that fuller concept of the Christ life in the earth today.